This conference will now be recorded. Okay, public comments. Uh, any persons wishing to address the Planning Commission regarding items not on the agenda, speakers will be limited to three minutes. Any presentations for information purposes only. No action will be taken. Want to speak? You're just here to listen and observe. I don't. I don't know what's on the agenda. I don't know how to tell. But I just got to okay. Okay. Here for the parks. okay. Okay. So um, <clears throat> uh, number two, consent agenda. Everybody got a meeting uh, copy of the meeting minutes from last month in their email. Can we see if anything in those that needed to be changed? If not, I will contain a motion to uh, approve the minutes as presented. So moved. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Any no discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Same sign. Okay. Number three, comprehensive plan economic development wrap up. Josh, it's all yours. Well, we're going to finally step away from housing for a while. Yes, sir. <laughs> they are. We're not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're. We're running the thick of things with the, that grant. Mm -hmm. uh, but last meeting we talked about coming up with some solid goals. And I tried to do some looking to see what some other cities did. And I put it in your packet um, a couple of examples. El Dorado had one. I don't like how they organized it, but it, it was kind of interesting how they had some how they had their goal, their strategy, or no, I'm sorry, they had a goal and an objective and a strategy, and they kind of broke it down. Um, Any extra copies by chance? I don't. Um, <laughs> Tomorrow will be great. <laughs> I didn't want to hear so I can't bring it up there either. I'm so, so prepared today for this. Um, the other one that was interesting, I thought, was Winfield. Winfield is interesting. I'm not even sure if they have theirs adopted yet. I think it's still working. I think it's still working. But the, the draft plan, what they chose to do instead of putting goals at the end of each chapter is they had this list of uh, goals at the end. And they threw them all together, but they are priority based. They have a an ongoing category, short term within a five year span, midterm five to ten, and long term ten to twenty. I actually kind of like that part. I don't know how I like having it all at one place at the end of the plan, but but having it um, at the end of a chapter like that, having the the different time span of goals. I think that's probably something that's worth going on this year. I don't know, bro. <laughs> There's two of them. <laughs> Dream <laughs> come true, right? <laughs> so what it comes down to is what kind of goals do we want to see for economic development? And I can use these examples, I can put them back in. Um, let's see if they had any for economic development from El Dorado. G311. They have conduct regular periodic economic development summits that include, at a minimum, representatives from the city, other Inc. I'm sure that's probably a like a mainstream organization or something like that. Splendid job. There are conventions in Visitor Bureau, the Chamber. Oh no, I guess they have a separate mainstream. So I don't. That was probably a development organization, El Dorado. So they they want to have regular meetings that uh, brings those groups together. That's a better strategy. Another one that they had was ensure. That's helpful. Okay. That's pretty much my board. Yeah, that's so what I was going to say. That's, that's, that's something that we're not, yeah. yeah. So I don't think that's necessary, but. Uh, this says ensure economic development policies and incentives that are implemented support the, loss, the stated long term economic development goals of the city. 
I think that's a, a sort of gimmick. You've got to do that. But yeah, and it's, it's a little overly broad for a goal, yeah. in my opinion. It kind of sets up where we wish that a goal would be not. And I think we had some a similar goal to that. That's a, that's a goal set by committee. That's what that is. I know we're is sitting it? on a committee, but it's an objective. Let's see. Let's see what our goals are. Let's start with that. Yeah. So it's a, and, and I said our goals, it's what the plan goals are. It says consider establishing a dedicated source of funding for economic development, enabling multi year budgeting and programming by the city and its economic development partners. And it came up with ideas like uh, examining the pros and cons of committing additional financial resources, uh, looking at stuff like uh, a dedicated revenue source for economic development, like a sales tax, which honestly is probably not going to happen in the current climate. <laughs> but it, it was something that was listed. Uh, so my thought is our goals should be um, more along the lines of something that we can, you know, these are, that are all good and everybody knows that these are things we have to be doing. Something more along the lines of something that we need to be doing, like working with this consultant that we're already working on for retail and maybe having some set parameters for that. And there's got to be something like that for, you know, industry as well. And find somebody like that and help with that as well. That's kind of more my thought. What these goals are look like. Does anybody else disagree with that? That something more concrete than what these are and what I'm seeing here on um, and even El Dorado's. Um, and, and that's something that you guys as staff and are going to be better to come up with than, than this we're committee. Right I mean, you guys know what needs to be done. Oh, we're looking at the goals. And maintaining a relationship is under. Yeah, that's 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 something you should do. Anyway. So something that we can track. Metrics. Metrics. Exactly. Yeah. Evidence based. Something that we can see. Something we can, something we can, see. Something we can touch. Something we can track. Whereas this is all stuff. Yeah, fine. Put these in as ambitions or something. These those are, are those are cultures. Those are cultures. Yeah. Things. This is so, there you go. Yeah. Establish a culture of. Yeah doing all of these things, and these are ongoing things, but my thought on goals is something that we can track, you know. We're gonna to talk to so many people every quarter or about whatever. Yes, Lloyd? Goal will need to be specific, measurable, achievable, <laughs> realistic, and time opposed. Some of these goals that we've heard tonight don't meet any of those they parameters, do they? They could go on down 100 years. Right. Right. That's, he's exactly right. Like, that's the definition of a goal. It was more eloquent than I was with it, but that's what I was trying to get to. Thank you, Lloyd. You're welcome. So I guess my question is what what sort of goals that are measurable and actually are measurable? <laughs> that's what I'm trying to get out of you. Because I agree with you. Right. Um, well, I'll propose one. Absolutely. Um, in the next five years, direct or obtain, within the next five years, obtain three economic development grants. That, yeah, that's the kind of goals that I'm thinking of. I'm just not thinking of any off the top of my head. Something that specific we may have to um, massage the terminology because there really aren't like there's an economic development grant for CDBG, but economic development grant. So something that you could for the projects because then if you say you set those grants for and there's also specific non-governmental funding sources, uh, the Gates Foundation is one. Yeah. Let me know when you've got to accept this. Yeah. So you know, just have to yeah. look. Yes. As, but, yeah. And if you don't get them, that doesn't mean you didn't get you didn't keep the goal, you just didn't get three, but you got two. 
you get a score, you get a grade. Yeah. But if you aim at nothing, that's exactly what you get. Right. That's measurable. <laughs> yep. We try to obtain grants pretty much every day. So. Right. So we're going to change that. Well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I've got. <laughs> I think a nice goal to have would be for um, several community partners to come together and form grants just amongst ourselves for some of the businesses that, and we've kind of talked about this when we're talking about um, working on the Main Street stuff. Like there's gonna be some areas that grants available to Main Street designated communities, it's not going to apply to all of the businesses. So it'd be nice to come up with some community partners to come together and have some grants for those other businesses. So establish a local grant fund. Yeah. Where's the goal also? Should the goal be to, in the next five years, accomplish becoming a Main Street community? That would be measurable. Yes, absolutely. It's going to be very competitive going mm -hmm. forward. I like, I like the phrase community partners. Yes. I think we that should be one where we have community partners, and we have to define what. Not just, not just. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited about it, but uh, got some. I think we talked a little bit about that. Who's got skin in the game, okay? Yeah. Um, so I, I, I would say that, you know, that, that would be a metric. Mm -hmm. Where are we now? And I, I'm okay with the five-year thing. Where, what do we call a hit? And what gets us on base in terms of establishing community partners? You know? mm -hmm. Do we have it? <clears throat> this crosses a little bit into housing, but I think we should put something in there for what we've talked about, the downtown rehabilitation. Maybe the goal could be, you know, try to get one building renovated in five years or at least get a project initiated. Um, it'd be nice to do an entire block like Pittsburgh, right? And that's, you gotta start somewhere. But there's before HIV now, there's there's enough tools in the toolkit. What we what you guys need to do is tell city to get it done. Yeah. That's an excellent you know, power us because I can tell you the commission really responded to that. I thought during the public hearing last week. Yep. Um, so I think they would welcome that goal. And that one crosses too, both housing and Well, you mentioned part of skin the game. So Evergy was a big funding partner in Pittsburgh, and they got a courtyard named after them there. You know, we've got corporations here that we could probably work with and. You know, I'm working with Creekstone right now on the Creekstone Pavilion at Wilson Park. We know that you have large leadership gifts if you've got the right vision and if they can see the benefit coming back to them as well. So you just have to have the vision and the plan. But, it, you know, that falls under Main Street too because that's, if we get that, that's going to help some things downtown, at least on the first floor level. So we want to, how we want to word that? Rehabilitate one block of downtown in the next five years. Building or one block? Building. I'd say a building would even be a great success. A block is going to be tricky because you've got piecemeal ownership. You might be able to get two or three, but you might have one in the middle that holds out on you. So unless you can buy up a whole range, if you're going to do a block, you know the Summit Block and 300 South has some potential, maybe, just because it's one cohesive ownership. But. What I'm doing is just kind of writing down what our brainstorm is. I'll put it together, obviously, before we approve it. Yeah. It's a little massage <laughs> a little bit. And, and it's, it's okay to aim high. Uh, so, again, and again, who are the partners or players in a block? You know, define one, define it. What's our reason for choosing that one? Is that, uh, is it, is that the direst need in the downtown area? And what makes it dire? Is it that four of the buildings are vacant and in states of, of, of deterioration? And so maybe we don't do everything in that block, but maybe we rehab or rescue those four buildings, you know, and that we call that a block success, you know, 
in, in that, you know. And, and so, uh, we, I'm sorry, I'm just, just trying to hear things and give them life. Yeah, so like no, you put well, and there. also, you know, is it just renovating upper floors for housing, or is it you've got a vacant business space down, down there and you have to, you know, incubate something in that as well? Right. So, so we, we, we can define, say, we, you, you fly at 40,000 feet, you drop at 20,000 feet, then you get down to crop duster level and say, you know, once the nuts and bones of this start to look like. I mean, I can think of 15 so, buildings right off the top of my head. Yeah. That would be great candidates. It's just who's willing to invest as an owner. Right. And go through all the paperwork in the process. But I mean, I think I think that's a that's that's a measurable. Even that what you put out there, that's a measurable thing. It needs definition to say right. what's our you know what's what's our rubric school language. What's our rubric? What are we what are we measuring for? You know, what is a success? Yeah. You know, what's the scale? You know, in terms of that. So we have to get down to, to at some point in time, we get down to task level. But, you know, so uh, any of these can be a good a good uh, a goal as long as you're ready to, willing to do the mining down to get down and say, okay, what is that actually going to look like? How do we, what are we going to measure? What is success in that, if it's a building or a block? What is the outcome? Let's see if we you know, get to there. That's, I think that that, a lot of this, is what falls flat in terms of our history of goal setting, is that we have set some really noble goals before us, but we've not done the grunt work to turn it into tasks and outcomes that we can say we did this. You know, but we never set metrics. Yeah, planning. We get planning and strategy and tactics confused. And planning is setting objectives. Strategy and tactics takes the operation side to achieve the objectives. Right. right. I, I don't want to be putting up more on, on staff's plate, but that's my thought. Is you guys are the weeds on this, and you guys know. What a lot of this stuff is going to be better. We can sit here and talk about it all day, the, the group of us, but we don't know those specifics. Right? And you guys are going to know that better than we are. Well, That's why I'm more interested in, in the goal. Right. You say put it on our plate, but in my opinion, staff should take the comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, we. That's where you look at and say, okay, we don't have someone that can do this. We need to add a position or we need to reorganize the department because this right. needs to be its main focus. So it's not about adding workload to existing people. It's how you're restructuring your organization to meet those long-term strategy. And that's the whole point of this. This is transformational kind of stuff. Right. Really. So don't let that be a... I don't. I don't. If you, if you didn't notice, that's why I told you that. <laughs> I just Kind of and along those lines, so I don't know if this is a goal necessarily for the plan, but you know, we're kind of already working on it, but we've talked about having a housing focused board. But I think maybe if you guys are gonna weigh in on that, what are the tasks of that board? What's its scope gonna be? Is it just gonna try to advocate? Is, is it actually gonna maintain funds and try to do grants, you know, that kind of like do you wanna see that level of activity to attack the housing problem? And also, you know, the economic development side of things too. I'll bring housing back and we can talk about that. Yeah, because we need to do time. these in my mind are together. <laughs> metrics and, and that sort of stuff for housing as well. If you go by our citizen survey comments, you should probably set a goal that says bring one or two new restaurants to town in the next five years. Absolutely. Sit down and eat anyway, because the demand is and that, and that, that is kind of my friend's for goals. But what is achievable on that? I mean, we do need to set that goal. That's what I'm talking about with this consultant we're using. We need to set a goal that, that you know, we get some action off of that guy and then we continue either with him or somebody else to keep going on that. So I think that needs to be a goal. So that's got that vision for the commission and the city manager going forward. Because I think that's a good way to do this. I know we haven't got a lot of results out of it yet, but someone's going to have some results doing that or they wouldn't have a business. So I think that needs to be one of our goals in here. Keep them on the right track. Move forward. Yeah, very much planning commission. Back 
on Kate Paisley's comment about grants, I would caution about having a goal specific to draft establishing a grant program, though. I mean, there's everybody, so I, if it's under the Main Street with their IWW grants and that, because it already has very solid parameters, but to just simply have a grant program, it is incredibly challenging because the money is gone depending on what the program so it have to be very specific because there's a lot of the state programs that used to have a grant component they've gone away from it because the money is gone and there's no so you can do zero interest or stuff like that so it'll be depending so that would be kind of challenging i have two loan programs very low in, i mean flexible is all get out but it's it just very specifically or cautiously, if that's going to be a maybe that maybe so, instead of focusing on the grant, it's we're focusing on getting Main Street started that, so that they can do the grant. Because they us. have experience <laughs> with programs like that. Hey, so would you elaborate on your idea just a little bit more? I yes. I, I took it completely different, but I think they took it. Would you talk about that a little bit more, please? Yeah, I feel like um, I meant it a little differently. I meant just maybe community partners who are willing to annually put a designated amount into a fund that is available right. 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 to get up to, to businesses build, and yeah, just to build for local businesses going, hey, I want to help these these upcoming businesses. I think that's what her thought is. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Which is also, <laughs> it's, it, it is a good idea, but it's, it, it has, Numerous challenges along with that. So, then we just got a lot of experience. Yeah, right. Right. So, right. right. so I, uh, the idea is great. Um, maybe just as a, you know, that's what? See how it kind of See how it goes. So okay. Even if it's just more of a mentorship program than, you know, money. Some of those have had uh, a lot of hard feelings attached from the places I've tried those before. Yeah. Like an incubator. Inc like yeah. <laughs> when, when those grades go poorly, things get ugly. Oh. So. Okay. Back that's, to a, that's a pretty darn good list to start with. I thought so. I'm actually pretty happy with our discussion. It gives me something to go off of, and yeah, and we haven't done a survey on that yet, so we need to get some citizen input, I think. But <laughs> that helps me design a survey question. Yeah, because we can actually, arguably, put one of these goals or more than one goal into the more question. <laughs> It'll it look a little different than the survey. But I guess it will. Does anybody else have a, any other? Talk about before we move on to parks. I'm going to go to survey now or after. Whatever you want to do. Real quick, get out of the way. I don't think that's going to hurt you. <laughs> we didn't, uh, didn't really visit with you guys in this last survey because it was really intended for the city commission and the budgeting process, and there was some. There were several sample surveys that they've done before, but I did want to share the results with you if you didn't see them. <clears throat> so rather than repeat the wheel of the first one with a lot of those big area questions, we looked a little different. So this one was attempting to be kind of educational and determine that people understand how little their property and taxes and sales taxes actually go in their, our community, um, which two thirds felt that they did. I was a little surprised it was that high, but again, I think our sample is still skewed toward people who are more knowledgeable about the city. We are at 122. We need to be, I'd like to get to 600. I mean, so please help me spread the word on this. Um, there's going to be one going out possibly tomorrow on housing. And I may just say, hey, we got a housing survey going and the attempts to get a few new people locked in. But um, we just got to keep doing them. Hopefully it'll grow over time. And then we kind of told them, you know, here's what we spend on the general fund. Do you think you get your value, which is about $900 per taxpayer per year for services that are provided out of that which when you put it that way um 60 percent are i think if you don't give that context you probably would get a little more um, lopsided result 
And then we ask people to allocate $100 across these different general fund categories. Unsurprisingly, public safety, the clear winner. I expected that based on the first survey results, but not too far after that was streets and sidewalks, which again does not surprise me because we get so many comments about them. Um, and then, boom, there's $62 of your 100 right there. Now, we're not going to allocate our budget exactly according to this, but it gives you some sense of the weighting of improvement. So what that tells me is citizens want to see us spend more money on street sidewalk projects. So to do that, we need to find the money, uh, which is a whole other challenge. Bit of a drop off then to parks and facilities, which is, of course, is tonight's discussion, but still decently high. There's support there for more what you would consider quality of life amenities. And then toward the bottom, more is neighborhood services, code enforcement, and external agencies that we fund. And then we asked, you know, the open-ended question, you know, and we got all kinds of answers. There's quite a few responses. I wasn't going to go through them, but you're welcome to look at this. I can send out a link if you didn't vote in it. And uh, just, again, general questions. And there's, <laughs> there's a range of things on here. So there are some comments that are specific to, let's see, obviously street ranked high. So I'll just click on park since we're trying to move into that discussion. Maintain parks, have bathroom and Pershing Park. It's actually a project in next year's budget. Um, offload parks that are not being used and put the funds into core parks. So that's something we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, there were some really off the wall comments. Several different people to talk about turning Spring Hill Golf Course into other things, whether it's mini golf or a shooting range. People saying how we should build a, a skate rink or an indoor, I don't remember exactly, but you know, more stuff to maintain than what we already have. Um, so again, there's always kind of a disconnect between the wish list and what's realistic, but there was, there was some interesting things in there. So. Someone has already got the same idea as us about renovating downtown. Maybe they were at our meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Um, more funding parks and streets. Invest in either maintaining what we have or making the town more attractive to outsiders. So, you know, competing balances. So it's the commission's job, obviously, to figure out how to uh, fund all that with limited resources, but it's your job to kind of help them figure out what the priorities are based on some of this input. So, you yeah. know. That was that one. Like I said, next one will be housing, and then we'll do one on economic development, and that's when we'll get all the responses about the restaurants they want to see. <laughs> and then we'll go into parks and rec, so probably that will not come out until later in the summer, which is fine because I'd like to spend at least this meeting and probably the next meeting talking about some big picture issues with those areas and getting some feedback from you that will kind of help me design the survey. Um, but I think we need to get more community input on the parks, not just what features they want to see, but helping us prioritize if we have core parks, what we're concentrating on there. Um, and this is something we've been talking about for years with the Beautification Tree Advisory Board. We even had a public hearing. Um, I can go over that memo in a little bit, but that's kind of what staff's thinking is. So you're the citizens, so you kind of tell us what you're thinking. A little bit more. So when you refer to core parks, are you talking about what is listed as a neighborhood park or even smaller list than that? Well, we've redone that list a little bit. Okay. I um, don't think I have that actually. Well, was that a Google sheet? <coughs> yeah, we, we, we had okay. to um, update that because two of the parks are not even parks anymore. And, there was numerous inaccuracies with the amenities, so we've actually already done that. Okay. As I work the let up, field. who needs a chapter five still? You got one there. you got one. What we fasten these out, Mr. Chair? I I have one thing. If I could direct this to Absolutely. Mr. Lawson. Uh, Inside of those, and you talked about the survey. Okay, I, I saw public 
or the two public safety and streets and streets. Okay, so what does that what does that mean in terms of like public safety? What what exactly the top police fire EMS? Okay. So just those those city services provided. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then private emergency management in there. And 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 then when you say streets and sidewalks are you talking about? Expansion of traffic ways. Is that the that what you think? I think most citizens would like to see improved maintenance or just improved maintenance of traffic ways. Which even that is a challenge. It, it, it is, and it's going to be tougher because if we grow it all and we haven't expanded access ways, it's going to be tougher to maintain the existing <clears throat> access ways. So, but anyway, just want to know what, you, what you thought that meant. That'd be my interpretation based on citizen comments. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I rank the, this language, crucial, non crucial access, came from a, a memo from Tamara Niles. Um, I should have I should have uh, distributed it to you guys by email. Apologize for that. Beautification board, don't copy. Oh, here's a minute. I remember that you were going to do it today. Yep. <laughs> so in this memo, April 2017, in response to the goal in the conference of plan, which was look into disposing of certain properties, the main reason is because we have, you know, 20 something parks, we have to mow them all. So much time in the parks and facilities division is just mowing and basic maintenance. They don't have time to really enhance anything. And additionally, you can't buy playground equipment that's up to standard for all of those parks. You've got to be selective. So that's part of what led to the Wilson Park Master Plan. It's part of what led to our Paris Park discussions. It's what's led us to do things like put disc golf course in Cox Park and plant monarch butterfly milkweed and some other vacant lots and some out-of-the-box thinking that we're trying to do is to reduce that mowing and or to increase utilization of the park to justify it staying on the rolls. So she went through a whole rationale about all this and she kind of categorized them basically. So what, what came up for discussion was Mills Park, which is basically the one lot they couldn't build a house on, on Highland Drive because of the drainage. Um, and so it's just a little nature, nature park basically. There used to be a bench and some other stuff. They took everything out. It, this is one where we might look at planting some milkweed or something. Um, Cox, of course, is uh, North Fifth Street, and it, it, it was pretty yeah, it's lightly used at the time we were looking at this. Um, now that the disc golf is in there, it's gone considerably. So I think it's good to go for now. We'll just kind of keep an eye on it. Um, at Brock Park, we did actually go ahead and get rid of. So this is now Habitat House and another vacant lot that we intend to give it to Habitat in a year or two once we get our tornado site removed. So that was a good example of one that, yeah, we could absolutely get rid of. The only reason it was kept around was these horseshoe pits. We relocated the horseshoe pits to Pershing Park. Um, they're not as well utilized, but my understanding is some of those players don't participate anymore. It's not because we moved it. It's just they've gotten old. Um, and then another park that was thrown under the mix of this that is not in this list was um, – I can't remember. I don't know if the only three we did. So we had a public hearing. And we talked about this, and it didn't really work so well because I had three new board members that were just kind of coming into it, kind of in the spotlight. And Tamara kind of backpedaled on us in the meeting, which was unexpected because she had been the one pushing this. But the biggest problem was when we actually researched the deeds, we found two of these parks had deed reverters, so we couldn't really even get rid of them um, effectively. There was just complications in the property title when we accepted them. There's some question as whether that stuff actually holds once it's become a park. But Brock was the only clean case, and that's why we proceeded with it. So with Mills Park, it would revert to the first Christian Church of Science. They didn't want it back. Half of Cox Park was going to revert to Otis Morrow's mother-in-law, I think. It was a weird mess. So that's kind of one thing that steered it. And then the other problem was we got only the negative voices that were like, don't close my park. Yeah. Even though they couldn't actually validate whether they had been there. We didn't get all the people that would probably like to see that happen if it meant that tax dollars could be redistributed elsewhere. So we haven't done that since, and we haven't pushed the issue real hard, um, other than they've been going around and touring the different parks. 
Newman Park is one that we've talked about for years about just turning into an RV park. It's got all the amenities you need. It's got a dump station, bathrooms, everything. Um, Which Newman Park? So that's South End off Lincoln and Summit, just north of the old sticker park. Okay. But a lot of that playground equipment was taken out. I think the big hang up on this has been uh, Russell Graves kind of didn't want that to happen because it would be in competition with his uh, Park Discussion River. I don't think that the same sentiment there about worrying about that is, is in place that it was at the time it was brought up. So if you guys want to put that back in the plan, I think we can make it happen. Something to monetize it a little bit, you know? Yep. Because it's really not a great neighborhood park. Yep. Cherokee Park, not this one for, this one is right. dumb. <laughs> so this is actually just the median of US 77 south of the river. It's not in the city limits, but we maintain it. As far as I can tell, the only reason we have this is because we had signage, and there may or may not be some kind of flood court consideration. I've never got a clear answer on that. Um, we tried to give this away to Russell. He didn't want to maintain it. There's a couple picnic shelters out there, but otherwise it serves no real purpose. They'd rather deteriorate it too? Yeah. yeah. I hate the fact that we're mowing and maintaining property outside the city limits, other than the well fields, which we have to. That's different story. It's, it, to me, but that's this, so stupid. I, did, I never knew we were maintaining. No. So that's what you're That doesn't make any sense at all. I think in the 1950s, it did. I you know, that. I think probably people stopped. Oh, yeah. Rest stops. Yeah, like rest stops. <laughs> uh -huh. That's entirely possible. But now. She says we had to retain access for the levee system. I don't understand that. It's on the opposite side of the river from the levee, so that makes zero sense to me. But it may still be a quarter. <laughs> but that's but the yeah. property between it and yeah. yeah. Well, and the biggest change is Russell built a restaurant, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. That's, that's one we're going to look at probably again. Uh, Carver Park. Oh, I didn't want it. Yeah. Oh, I didn't want it. I doubt it. Her recommendation. <laughs> I know Russell. Does it sound like Russell? <laughs> Her recommendation is Carver Park was to give it to the Record Commission, but obviously we gave it to Cali College, and now it's sitting there, and we kind of discussed what we might do with it, if they would want to give it back, but right now it's vacant. And not talking about building new ones there? We've talked about it. Just <laughs> it's who you talk to. Just okay. an eighth, so it's, you know, where the helicopters land for our collection. I just heard that again this week, so. I guess that was last week. Um, do you want to talk about the Dow at all? <laughs> it's not going anywhere. It's there. Yeah. I think we we'll keep it out. I think the building probably needs some details. Oh, yeah. the building three. We will be adding a hike bike trail on the south perimeter there, connecting to the existing trail, so that may improve some of the pedestrian flow. Winton Park, so now we're getting into more of the neighborhood parks. And these are all, I think staff agrees, it's good to maintain these, just to have some green space in the neighborhood, but they don't need to be over the top. A little bit of playground equipment, a picnic table, and a shelter, and you're good. Um, it's just a place for kids to run around. Winton Park, if you've never been there, is a neat little park down at Sleeth Edition. It's kind of hard to find, but we will never get rid of it because there's nothing else in that area. And you have to cross a bypass or a railroad. Well, it's got a backstop. Yeah. It, 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 is it, important. It, and it's pretty well maintained. It's actually a neat little area. Um, but also down in Sleeve, we've got these giant abandoned ball fields that we've just let go to see because we built new ball fields, which is all well and good, but now what do we do with it? At the time, we thought we were going to be expanding the wastewater treatment facility considerably in that property. That is no longer the case. So now we've got two large vacant lots we don't know what to do with. We've talked about just planting them with milkweed kind of out of the way, you know, um, some, because we're just mowing it. I mean, that's all it is. It's just there to be mowed. If we could ever figure out housing development, for it, that'd be great, but it's sleep edition. It's not really an attractive place to build. For it's like work. right uh, across the street. This is more like, right. <laughs> you know, Jim Seibert's mobile home development he's talking about. This is more like where you put that, but is it's there. Yes. You did it. But, you know, these are ones where I would classify them as, you know, if we can get rid of them in a good way, constructively, and my contact also let's do it. Not Winton, but some of those. Uh, ben Gibbons Park is obviously a nice little pocket park downtown. Quite a bit of investment on that. And now you're getting into your kind of your core parks, the ones we know people use the most. That they have shelters that get reserved. They have activities like IYQ camp, or they're just you know immensely popular. Obviously, Paris and Wilson Park aren't going anywhere, and we feel both parks need investment and upgrade. Um, definitely the playground equipment in both, which has a trickle down effect because as we pull playground equipment out of Wilson Park, it can go to other parks and be reused there that don't have anything you remotely have to code. Um, so it's, it's good for the whole system. 
Randy Park's also a nice little park. Uh, because of the Hogan being there, I think it's probably a good one to keep around. What is the shape of the <clears throat> building at the Hogan? The Hogan is not in good shape. <laughs> And that's been so. If we can go into facilities too, if you want, but I was trying to keep this in parks for the most part right now. Uh, Veterans Lake is, I would say, even grown in popularity since this analysis, specifically because we built Lake View Estates, but also other enhancements that we've done in the area. Now we've got the shelter down there, we've got the restrooms. Um, we'll probably move some playground equipment there. That's not going anywhere. Pershing Park is probably our newest park in terms of. I think it's got the newest equipment. Uh, as I said, there's a plan to put restrooms there as well, so I think it's a keeper. But it's also two blocks, two or three blocks away from Cox Park and four or five blocks away from Wilson Park and probably not more than six blocks, maybe seven from Lovey Watson Park. So you've also got, you got a, concentration a lot of duplication in, in one neighborhood and you got other neighborhoods that have almost nothing. Uh, Needler Pond is pretty much just, you know, a wilderness hike, fishing, bike trail area, but they are putting an 18-hole disc golf course in there now, so that we think that will probably increase its utilization, but it's not really that hard to maintain. Uh, they burn out most of the year's resident. Not really. Lovey Watson Park is probably not going anywhere just because of its connection to the Northwest Community Center. Um, again, it's got decent playground equipment, could probably use an upgrade. It's got okay pavilion, but it's got a nice little 1 16th mile walking trail around it that we're incorporating in our trail system. Uh, the popular walking trail is, I think, good to go. We've added lighting, we've added a story walk. Um, it's a full mile now, got a lot of paving and upgrades, fix the drainage issues. And we have to maintain that area as um, they're hanging it right now, but it was designated as a greenway or like a natural grasses habitat. It had to do with when we traded off the old packing plant to the college to build the athletic facility. So we had to redesignate this area. So it's not going anywhere. There's really nothing you could put down in there that is worth filling, but um, we keep looking at enhancing possibilities. Walnut Park is basically, you know, our primary boat ramp on the Walnut. A lot of people use it for fishing. There is equipment and the restrooms down there, but it floods so much that it's not all in very great shape. So we could look at downsizing some things. Chestnut Park is the landing on the Art River. Um, that one's nice because it's basically all being maintained by the Kansas Wildscape Foundation. So they paid for all the signage. They helped us get the ramp cleaned up. So we do a little bit of maintenance, but we don't have a lot of burden. And that's one that could really could explode over the next 10, 20 years. Now, it's a uh, national water trail. Um, the kayaking seems to be picking up. And we've talked about ways to tie that in with other recreation activities in town. So I think it has a lot of potential in the future. <coughs> Not listed on here, strangely, or not, is Cattell Park, which is um, just a little bit south of the high school in an area that doesn't have access to a park, but we have gone round and round and round on that one. We've tried adoption strategies. We had local groups that claimed to be interested, fell through. Um, That's where they tried to do the community gardens at one point, right? There was a lot of that. We had to rip all that out because it just went to weeds. We had... You know, they wanted us to put playground equipment back in after it was removed, but we couldn't get them to help raise funds. It's just been a very political issue. Right now, it's, it's a pretty much a vacant lot. It's got a picnic table. Might have a shelter. I'm not even sure if it does. It's got a trash can. That's about it. It's there. Again, I think there's a deed reverter issue on it. Or, or the neighbor didn't want it. I can't remember this particular. It's, it's specifically in the plat. That's right. It's platted as a park, so right. it creates challenges. But that's one that I. Why does that create challenges? I put that under excess because you have to, in order to remove it in there, you have to get the community. I don't know the whole process. But you have to get the the people in the subdivision to sign off on it. Yeah, that's the only way you're going to remove it. <clears throat> Which we know we got one that won't. Right. Well, and I, there's probably, I'm sure it's not 100%, but, and then there's how much of that area do you actually ask? Is, is everybody that's in that subdivision? You know, is it certain type one? That's, that's an attorney question. At any rate, I tried to take the memo, categorize it, update the chart. This is what we came up with. Um, the asterisks are where we have plans for expansion, just nothing in place at the moment, just so I can keep track in my mind of what we're doing. Um, but I'm open to discussion on if we need to move things up or down or what you guys think. 
uh, because it's very fluid, I would say, right now. And we do have Harrison here from the Beautification Board, and Paisley is also on that board, and we'll continue to talk about parks. I think we've got a meeting in two weeks at Pershing Park, and continue to kind of look at the rest of them, look at the ADAs. The ADA is not a huge issue. We have all the parks, because if you don't have an ADA client approach to a playground area, you're in violation. So at the very least, we need to pour some concrete, and we need a plan on how we're going to do that. But then it gets into, do you get into inclusive playgrounds and those sorts of issues, which can get more expensive. Um, that's a debate we're having. <laughs> so, um, any questions? Any? Can you see a map? I know it's kind of hard to figure out where these all are. We have an above average number of parks for community of our size, is my understanding, from staff that have researched this. Uh, it's a lot to maintain, and it takes up quite a bit of Tony's parks budget. So it would be nice if we could focus on five or six, but because of various considerations, I think we're kind of stuck. Yeah, unfortunately, it sounds like with most of the parts that you need to get rid of, you just can't for one silly reason or another. How, how many of you didn't know some of these parks existed or that the city maintained them, I guess? Uh, I didn't realize the city maintained them. And Mary was saying um, you, there was one you didn't know about, right? Excuse me? You said there was one of these that you had never heard of? Yes, there's so many. I didn't know about <laughs> So it's like, if the citizens don't know about it, why do we have them? Yeah. I, I think the city was probably too generous in accepting property sometimes a long time ago. And some of these may be 75, 100 years yeah. old. I mean, you don't want to lose constructive green space. It's important. You don't want to get urban sprawl and lose that. But it's got to be constructive. It can't just be an empty lot that good grass is growing high. It's attracting wildlife, which we strive to not let happen. Catalpa Park would be a great one for our habitat for humanity if that neighborhood would mm -hmm. agree. Yes, it would be an easy one to do housing on. And it's not like there's not green space because the church has got quite a bit south of it. And there's another playground further to the west that I think might be part of the school's property. I'm not 100% sure. But if, and if you drive around the neighborhood, most everyone has got some kind of playground equipment in their yard there. Well, yeah, it's not very far from lots of... School and there's playground equipment at the ball, ball, ball fields as well. Yeah, there's player, yeah, and there's at the ball field, it's not very far from. So, this is a visualization of everything they have to mow and maintain. And that's not everything we have because we've also got other lots that street and stormwater division takes care of. And we've got to mow, what is it, 18 miles of levee. So, we've got a lot of mowers. But, you know, this is Needler Pond and the Poplar Walking Trails. This is Veterans Lake. That's kind of Chestnut Park. So what could be done with that property that Russell Graves does not want in front of his restaurant? So down here at Cherokee? Yes, Cherokee Park. I don't realistically know. There's people that farm around there. But... Yeah. You know, KDOT is more and more turning those medians into native grass habitat to reduce yeah. their mowing as well. And it's right on a KDOT highway. Yeah. In Wyoming. Yeah, why don't we call KDOT? No. This isn't ours, this is yours. I only wish it were. It's at least folk a lot of these made, I think, because I don't I have no understanding why we are maintaining out of the city limits at this point. And it, it's definitely due to K Yeah. What they do with the relocation of the highway. That's exactly right. And that's the space between the old highway and the new highway. That's K Dot's property. So I, I think that argument needs to be made. As long as we're talking about expansional possibilities. So this is McFarland Pond, and there are a lot of people who would love to see us open access to this back up for fishing. I bet there's some pretty big fish in there these days. Mm -hmm. um, right now, to get in there, you have to go up Williams Way, which is an unapproved road. You have to practically ford the canal. We've had a project on the books for several years to put a low water crossing in there. Every year it gets bumped. I think it's been permanently deleted from this next year's budget. There was some talk that if we ever had the development here that we would transfer some funding into that. I don't think that's going anywhere right now. So there would be quite a considerable expense involved in getting this open again. Plus, the minute we reopen it, we have to bring everything up to ADA standards, which is going to be pretty expensive. So, yeah, it has a lot of potential as a recreational area, and I think it, it it's an obvious thing to maybe put in like a 15, 20, 30-year kind of plan, but it's not something that's on our immediate radar. 
at least not until we can deal with some of these other things. KDOM issues. will not let us access from like that. So yeah, it's, it's got to come from there. And, we we there. Phone call with that. and once we gave up that railroad we're crossing, we're basically. Right. I'm saying. So that's kind of what we're dealing with. <laughs> But like I said, we need to get citizen input. One of the things I'm going to ask in the survey is if people have actually personally been to these parks in the last year or if they're aware of them, because I think that'll give us some telling data. Well, I've been to Zimwalt Park. <laughs> <laughs> I've not been to Talbot Park. I haven't been to Lego Watson Park either. I did not even know Mills Park was a park. I went to that a lot as a kid when I was in Asia. I have no idea it was actually part of it. We thought we were on some of these private parts. It used to have a sign, but that seems to have disappeared. And then the purging part. Well, and it's part of a larger property that's kind of drainage. Yeah, it runs up the hill to, to the back of those properties up there. It's right here. Yeah, the green part would be way more than what we would ever use in the actual park. So Mills Park backs up to what's in the back? There's a pond behind it, and then what's back behind that? Isn't that that old old park that's been locked off for my whole life? Comes off of Highland. No, that's a different. Mm -hmm. I think it runs to the back side of the properties up there. Yeah, it, it just backs up to the Valley View Drive. It's next to Carmen's house. Yeah, I know. I, yeah, but I'm, I'm trying to think. Of going up the back side, there used to be a park off of Highland Drive. There's gates there still now. Yeah, down the hill. North of it, that's north of it. Okay. Yeah, that's like the back side of the golf course, I think is what you're okay. So you're talking vague goals. I love the 2003 golf development. Maintain a park and open space system. Well, we got one. It's We got too much of one. Uh, long range plan for development of the Walnut and the Greenway. This was a. The Greenway was a huge push in the 90s. And you probably know more about this than I do. There was. We've got plans in the building if they were to have baseball diamonds and stuff where a popular walking trail is. Like they had a whole, they obviously moved away from that and we ended up at the high school. Yeah. There was a lot of trail tie in and stuff. Um, I don't know what all that was really going to entail, but that's the first time they kind of laid out the hike bike trail system goal. Um, and I can pull up that map in a minute. But we obviously have done some of the Levy Trail. We still kind of have on our books the idea of going around and continuing all the way up to Poplar Walking Trail area. That's not in the imminent future. There would need to be considerable funds made available. And it would probably only be like a limestone trail with no way to pay all that. Okay. Um, the other issue I see with it is it goes back in some pretty not friendly places. I mean, it goes right by the sewer plant. Then it goes by all Valero's horrible oil reclamation property. There's a lot of fun smells in that area. I can tell you from having done the little bit too. Winds all the way around, comes back up the mill, and then you go along the bypass. So, it's like, what do you do? It's like, is it really that nice of an area to develop, or are there other options? So, that's what kind of led to us discussing the hike bike trail phase two. And I can show you guys what we're working on with that. And also the central trail and the idea of instead of running a trail around the perimeter of the city that's not really of any use to anybody, let's focus on trailing through the city and create connectivity for people that don't have access to vehicles and be useful to our citizens as well, still finding some scenic areas. So I mean, we're following this goal, but again, where's your measurability? Yep. And then I don't, I have no idea what this was about. There was a whole, I think they probably had to do some designations or something when they built the, the levee and the bypass to kind of, I mean, I know there's obviously they were finding artifacts and what's become at Sonoma, but I almost think they must have had to fall under some federal requirements for maintaining natural spaces or something because they were building that project. That's my I, that's my guess. I don't know. Um, so there's there's a designation of the Prairie Passage Recreation Area. That's Needler Pond. I guess it's its official name. There's Walnut Valley Greenway. There's signs I think on the highway that talk about that, but I have no idea if that's an officially designated thing that has any requirements. Maybe Tony would know. I don't know, but um, I don't see the Bypass corridor is a growth area, other than, like I said, if we ever bring that trail up. But we've got trails to either side of it that we are enhancing and committed to. So, yeah, I don't think that, unless that has to be in there. Um, we will not do the poll question like this. Uh, this was very 
That was mostly recreation oriented, no offense. <laughs> I would split parks and rec. I see them as a cooperative, but they're kind of separate issues, mostly due to the different entities that maintain them. Um, but again, like this, you guys know, the survey was very skewed towards getting positive responses back. I think we need to be a little more challenging with what we're asking if we want to get useful data. Um, the supporting questions too in there. <laughs> support and extension of the hike bike trail on the west side of the city south of Chestnut to improve safety of travel for the sports complex. Slight majority, I'm surprised it was that low. Uh, we did use this as justification to get funding for hike bike trail phase two or so. It worked. Um, we don't need to re ask that, obviously. Uh, this wetland stuff, I may have told you guys this before. There was a whole push when they were designing this plant to do a whole wetlands project. And the idea was we get water flowing in the canal again and maybe even generate power. And there'd be, they talked about reclaiming Creekstone's wastewater and holding in a retention area. Well, Creekstone ended up being a wastewater facility of its own. It goes back into the river. Um, I think this was all part of, they were trying to use it to justify the water treatment plant project, but that's back when it was like 22 to $26 million extravaganza. Obviously, we narrowed down what we're doing, and it's, I don't think any of this is reality, um, but I, was, I mean, look at the support for it. I mean, it was off the charts, which is weird, but I think it's because leading questions tend to get you the results you well, want. Well, if you, uh, A, if it were likely to result in a saving to taxpayers. Yeah, well, that, yeah, there's, that's, there's yeah, your yeah, that's costing yeah. a lot of money, which it really could have, so, oh, yeah. I don't think we need to do with the magic wand of this same money. This, this, this was the, the 2013 survey. I don't think we need a new wetland area park. We have Eagler Pond is a wetland. It floods all the time. Um, the lake floods. We've got that. Uh, the canal, you know, if, if it could be shored up, I think there's some potential there to do something. But we're going to get the trail built, and then we'll see how the utilization goes, if it's something we want to invest in. So So I've just thrown out 90% of your last survey, so what do we ask now? <laughs> All right, future needs. I guess that's a good place to start. Uh, you want to talk more about tennis courts? Pickleball. <laughs> I wouldn't talk about pickleball. We've got the tennis courts figured out finally, I think, after this negotiation. Pickleball is, you know, we've got a group that's looking at trying to do something. I've challenged them to get organized and raise funds and, and get an association started. I've also tried to connect them with the land and um, see about designing some programs so we can get kids interested in it and keep it sustained. So there's, there's some growth in that area. I don't know, do we need additional soccer fields? Is that something you guys see as a need? I would not. Um, I mean, I think at this point. This is probably before they. I don't know. This was after we built the new complex at the school. So we've got fields up there, right? We have practice nice. field. You have the stadium. Sorry, I don't know if I'm supposed to talk. No, so, no, please talk. And then down at the Dow, um, we currently have our northwest quadrant that is sand. Um, I don't know if there's any major projects where excavation of anything and if the city or County, state needs to drop dirt off that would be usable topsoil. So it, I, it is sprinkler. Um, I'm, we've sprinklered the entire east side right now of the Dow complex down south, and um, our next budget starting this this end of the summer, um, I will start working on the west side of that. And if with sprinklers, we should have beautiful green grass down there. So, so if you've got space, it's just about improving what you're doing. Yeah, I just, I, there's no topsoil on that northwest side. You can see there's a, like a, almost a foot step up from the good dirt, and we got good grass, and it steps up. How many years left? Just awful sand and full of stick burgers. It's awful. I have to ask. There was a ton of dirt back here from this, but it may have moved off some of that already. I think they used a lot of that as fill for the demolition project. Yeah, I think it's her buzzer over here. Box and box. Um, critters down there like to tunnel through all the grass too, so yeah, that keeps it entertaining. There was a directive to get disc golf. I think we've accomplished that. We'll see about sustainability. Man, dog park comes up a lot. We get a lot of comments about it. There was an effort. There were some citizens that were kind of getting organized and just kind of fell apart. 
you need some money up front for that because you got to have fencing and some money and stuff. You need and what really, they did up in that field. Yeah, so Bailey's Dog Park is a great example of what we need. If someone would take it on and really shepherd it and lead the project, I think the city could get behind it. But the city is not just going to pay for the dog park. Uh, so far, that hasn't really happened. I, every time someone brings it up, I kind of challenge people to, to push that forward. But it's not to say we couldn't keep that as a long-term goal. Uh, but, you know, we do need to upgrade our playgrounds dramatically, I think. And we've got to get some ADA consideration, at least Wilson Park, if no one else. Possibly Paris, too. Connections. That's something I've been working heavily on. So how do we, we got this big old network patchwork map. How do we get that connected? That's what we're trying to design our trail system to do. But not just to connect parks, but also to connect schools and places of employment and retail centers because we know we've got people in this community that are walking everywhere or they're biking everywhere. You see them out and about and they don't have safe routes to do it in a lot of places. So we're really pushing that because the money's there. We've got multiple different grant programs we can tap. There's a new one we just found out about that I'm looking into. And I think if they do pass an infrastructure bill, there's going to be even more money, not just for streets, but bike pad will be a huge part of it because they want to see more of that holistic approach to transportation and not just pave everything and drive on it. So I, I think we got a good handle on trails, um, but the parks still throw us for a loop. Um, I wasn't planning to go any further with it tonight. Um, we've told Land in June is kind of where we set aside to get really into recreation and talk about some of your guys' strategic issues and maybe even get into some other stuff. But um, I, I want to hear your thoughts. I want to convey them back to the beautification board and keep that interface going here for the next couple of months. In my mind, I was going to spend all summer working on parks and trails and recreation before we got into some of the, not easier, but more focused chapters at the end of this. Uh, so this is the start of the conversation, by no means this is the end of one. Well, I'll ask a question then. Sure. You mentioned connections and you mentioned uh, bikes. Uh, almost within the same setting. Could we allocate some money or bike paths um, so we um, instill safety and connect the parks? You should bring that up. <laughs> so the yellow is existing. This is the existing hike bike trail. This teal is phase two, and we are just about done with the plans. We've been messing. This is a three-year-old project on the books, and KDOT's basically barking at us to get it done. So it will let for bids in September, and you'll see construction hopefully by the end of the year. Coming right past this plant and going on down south to the Cali Athletic Complex. This section is already constructed. Um, basically people's front sidewalk is 10 foot wide. Uh, so we just need to connect to the other barriers. There's been some alignment changes since this. Uh, one of the big ones is um, this section will actually be on the other side of the canal. Um, so it's actually gonna hop over from Paris Park across the bridge, right there at the corner of the campus, come down what's basically kind of a dirt road area. And then it'll hop back onto this property to the south here that we've got and Evergy was the other reason this has taken so long because they had to get these transmission lines done and get out of the way. Across all the bridge we tried to close? <clears throat> yeah, so far we've got a crossing on there. Um, there'll be a crossing here, it'll be push button light flashing. Um, it's chaos approved for both that and Summit Street actually, surprisingly. So that Hawk Beacon thing, we're not doing that. It's going to save like $150,000. Um, but the reason we're doing it over there is because we've got weird alignment around the plant and um, fencing. It's going to save considerably on some of the fencing we're going to have to do. Plus, <laughs> it puts the canal between people and the plant, which helps with security. Yes. What is that teal pick up to the yellow? Where is that actually? The terminus just no, passed. It's, it's on the north end of the uh, pool, and then here it'll connect right there at that Lincoln where it dumps off the levee and comes at Lincoln. For those of you who don't know, the reason we can't take this on the levee is because of the Bruton's own portion of the levee, and we do not have permission to build there. I was trying to ask about it. I didn't even know well, that's fine. I'm going to be honest this about it. Without, without. Well, to this day, I do not understand how that was not taken care of when they built the levee, but so be it. Um, so we're going to go actually on the north side of Lincoln now. Uh, we looked at the south side. There's just too many conflicts. The north side, they're going to have to do some utility relocates, but otherwise it's pretty clean. Yeah. 
so that's like i said that's in progress that's going to happen the idea of this phase three was we would jump back to the levee through newman park build another bridge here like the one that we have on madison cross over take a go down to the cali and then a long winding network that we can do Will the bridge ever happen? I don't know. I mean, if we don't have realistic plans to do this, what's the point of it? It'd literally be a bridge to nowhere. It'd be pretty. It would improve that appearance of it. But I can tell you, Cali students are not going to walk all the way to the bridge for a safe crossing and walk all the way back. So it would only serve a purpose of connecting the levee, um, which, you know, at that point, maybe we could get back on and finish this wedge too. But it's, it's we're going to leave it on the map. It's not our top priority. So originally, these were part of one whole project. KDOT made us break it up. I'm actually glad they did. I think that's got us moving in the right direction. Where we want to go is to the central trail because this connection is what's going to link the, all this stuff to the north end of town and make it possible for people who live up there in Compass Point to maybe access the system if they want to. Additionally, quite a lot of this trail frontage is what I would call low income area, which means we're not serving them well and this would improve that, but at the same time, it also helps us get more money. It just does. So we've maximized that. So that's kind of our thinking. And also, this isn't the best map. Sorry. Pull the other one. Too many colors <laughs> Yeah, well, we had to show different phases. Sorry. So central trial to me is this whole thing. What we're trying to get is at least a birch, and we're waiting to hear back on, on a grant possibility. Um, so it can be done in phases. Or it can be done all at once if we can get enough money. <clears throat> but it's an easy one to do because there used to be a railroad corridor through here. So those of you familiar with Sixth Street, you've got a divided median a good portion of the way. The trail runs right down the middle of it. All we have to do is pave it and improve the signage in the area. And it's not a highly trafficked roadway. Um, there are some intersections of concern that we'll need to improve on. But it would it would get to the Northwest Community Center, hop onto that property, and go to Lovey Watson Park, and then that's Phase One. Um, it actually follows the trail in the park, so we don't even have to pave there. And then we pick up the next section, which is going to be a little more challenging because there's an easement we have to get. There's some back. It's not really an alley. I mean, it was platted as a street. It's not a street. Um, it's kind of. Mean the continuance? Mm -hmm. six. Yeah, because six basically right. dies at Fuentes' property, and it picks up again in sort of a meandering kind of dirt trail fashion until you get to Cox Park. And that's one of the reasons we put the disc golf in Cox Park is in our minds, it was going to see increased utilization once we got this trail. So now you've connected Paris Park to Lovey Watson Park to Cox Park, and now you're starting to get some of those connections. But the best part about the Central Trail is it's easy to shoot off and hit the schools. And these segments we can get safe routes to schools funding for or just do sidewalk improvements. So. Again, if you can kind of network different things together, I think it makes it more attainable. But the grand dream is to get it all the way up to Radio Lane and eventually figure out something for 8th Street, which is, you guys are probably all aware of a mess. This is not gonna be the alignment. I don't know what it is gonna be, but we keep talking to the district about it, trying to figure out a solution. But the time is getting to be now that we've got to figure this out because- Why is that not gonna be the alignment? There's not enough room to do sidewalk on most days. 8th Street, right now. 8th Street, oh, oh, okay. not, okay. 8th Street needs to be reconstructed. Okay, I, I keep yeah. talking about running it back behind. Yeah, this is good. Um, there's some challenges north of Kansas with property, uh, but it's it's doable. So the cutting, road cutting through the middle of the high school and going back down yeah. the easement. Yeah, we've, we've, we've talked river. about doing that. We've talked about a lot of different things. Hmm? The railroad. Property. Most of it, yeah. Most, that's primarily a utility easement because we have a water line basically along the Green Line there. Yeah. The issue with this phase, Russell owns a property there that I think we have some issue we'll have to look at. And it gets really tight back in there between the houses. Well, yeah. Um, there's, there's just some, it'll be a little more challenging than those, but it's doable. At, but continuing in north, it goes to nowhere. I mean, this is really backwoods area. And there's people that actually shoot back in there because they've got enough acreage. Um, so I don't think that it's safe. We need to do something for 8th Street. And it's it's a problem now. It's going to be a humongous problem once Compass Point is built out, if they do another apartment complex, if we end up doing more residential. I mean, I can just see it. I mean, I, it's a wonder to me we don't have kids getting killed walking on that road to high school. 
and people do not drive a 30 on that either. So that's like the highest priority segment, but it's also the one we have the least idea how to actually get built and get funding for. So how far out do you think that green, the green line, how far out is that face? Uh, Central Trail? Is that the one where you're saying, yes, you have the one you're working on right now. If I get the grant okay. waiting here, we will get this yeah. built next year, and then we'll reapply. So maybe as soon as three years. Maybe sooner if this other one pans out. It just kind of depends. We missed out on TA funding that would have probably paid for a good chunk of that because we don't have hike bike phase two finished. So we have got to get that project done before they'll give us any more transportation alternatives money. Um, it's competitive right now. Everyone's building trails. But 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 functionally, that's that that, pro that problem ought to be addressed as as the basis for the success story to date and getting more development interest in that area that that one the blue line I think is where we're at. I wish I had better eyes. That blue line you go to the green that's that's radio to skyline. Yeah. This is even yeah. Main Street. Yeah. Yeah I'm saying but from really that's the north, place on the from, yeah. from from radio the skyline that's eighth street mm -hmm. which two decades ago wasn't paved, it was just a gravel road. That's the problem. And, and, and horrifically, what I'm saying, by reason of that paving, you've seen the housing, the bit of housing development that you have, and that area, no one was going to do that mm -hmm. uh, off the gravel road. So we made the infrastructure investment there. Probably we should have done more. But at least we undertook that along with your east west uh, radio lane, which was abysmal uh, back then. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably somewhere, if you look in the archives of Dark City High School, you see lots of spoof type photographs of them trying to have events, high school type events. Um, at the at the current location of the high school, with that uh, uh, war zone type uh, traffic pattern that they had out there, uh, it was a nightmare uh, to try to pave Radio Lane West to Fifteenth Street. But all of that from bright yellow going north to that blue, all of that was like I said, it was just it was vast wasteland because there was no way to get around to it. Mm -hmm. Having done that, then you uh, had the basis for uh, traffic way improvement that supported the uh, securing future Beaver Creek stone to come in further north. So, so, and then if you veer back towards Summit Street and you get to, uh, what is it we call, is that Bright? Road there? Yeah, Brown would be just north of the Walmart thing, mm -hmm. where where we took down the seventh and Birch water tower, ate the cost of removing that asbestos laden water tower on the seventh and Birch, and put to increase water pressure to the north end of town, put that water tower there on Bryant Road. Okay, so, so all of that, you, you, other than that, there was really nothing there but a lonely, misplaced uh, uh, high school that it was difficult to get to. You know, again, with a community, our, we are, our city was the same in that in terms of what traffic looked like then when there was that tiny, underserved, no curb and guttering, two lane road trying to carry traffic, supporting traffic for a for a nine to twelve secondary school out there. It was a nightmare trap for people trying to get there for from the early eighties when they built that and opened it until the early two thousands, uh, from the mid nineties to the early two thousands when they built out West Radio Lane and North Eighth Street to Skyline. You know, so what's there now is 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 
principally there, including the what we call that housing development, that the the Eck development, Forest Glen, Forest, Forest Glen. Glen area. None of that happens if we didn't do that. Right, anemic traffic way there, and, and now that's. Underbuilt, and so now the time was overbuilt. Right. So I remember when it was built, everybody's like, "Why are you paving that road, you idiots?" And yeah. then now it's mm -hmm. it's heavily traveled. Travel. There are a lot road. of high school students that walk it. Well, <laughs> and, I mean, and that was an afterthought. I mean, you built it yep. in the mid '80s, you, or the early '80s. You opened high school, and in the year 2000, about. you created a traffic, at least a vehicle traffic way that supports. Right. Having a high school out there, you know, uh, uh, so you, so some of it you do, you know, and that was off of what our what our what our municipal finance looked like in the early 2000s in terms of doing that and making that kind of a local traffic way. It does direly need to be upgraded, but if you add in what it might take to have acquired the rights, the access ways. Do the traffic way improvement there you know, uh, first now then then versus now yeah. it's still a huge cost savings it just needs to be it needs to be fixed and improved I'm only going to say that from the standpoint when I ask you about roads and mm -hmm. sidewalks one of the things came to my mind is need for a sidewalk on that section of North Eighth. And the greater thing for the community is I think we are living on hope by having only uh, Summit Street, which is Summit Street, and not, and the bypass is, I have to say that, that's my word, the bypass is not the bypass, the bypass is the highway, and Summit Street is a local road. Uh, and it's the only traffic way that you have that you north, south to north throughout okay. the community. Right. Eighth will take you from Madison, the skyline, through some residential areas and school traffic ways. We have absolutely nothing east besides Highway 77 to carry traffic north. So again, a concern if we are, excuse me, when we are successful with growth and economic development, imagine having a community that only has one principal north, south, through fair for its entirety. Well, if we saw another 5% population growth or 10%, with the way traffic flows now, we have a huge problem. Again, how are you going to maintain a local Summit Street, five miles of local Summit Street, handling all of the north to south traffic that happens between local traffic and uh, commuter traffic through the city and northward or southward? Um, so we, we haven't. You know, we got high blood pressure. Yeah. Well, we are digressing a little into transportation, yeah, but I will I'm tell sorry. you, I will tell you that yeah. thought is why the southwest bypass extension is picking up steam again. Thank and you. it's not just with us; it's with KDA and even our congressional representation. This may happen much sooner than we were thinking because that's, that's why. I yeah. you guys. But what's going to happen is that gets built is it's dumping traffic right to Eighth Street. We already have a problem on East Street with semis and truck traffic, and now you're talking about even more flowing right off. So we've talked to them about if you're going to build it, make sure we're not dumping that directly on. Um, but that's going to create 8th Street as your other corridor. So 8th Street will be in dire need of improvement. I mean, it's Chips Hill Road, and it's got no shoulders and no sidewalks already. And that section yeah. from Radio Lane to Skyline is my biggest concern. Right. I know. Charles has mentioned one of the one of the reasons why I ran to the bike trails for safety mm -hmm. because we've already had this year a biker no by semi. Yeah. So we can't have them. Right and not now. far from where this crossing will be. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely on my mind. 
the ultimate goal of all this is there is not going to be any one way to attack the problem. We know we need trails, we need bike lanes, we need sidewalks, and it's trying to fit the pieces together and where the grant money can be. So we're actually working right now on finalizing a contract with an engineering firm so we can get our master transportation plan going finally six months later. Um, and you guys will probably be involved in that to some extent as we get into that chapter. But just so you know, I mean, we got new road, new road, new road, new road, fairly new road, pretty good sidewalk, big gaping gap here. And we know about Summit. Now we're trying to get, we've got money for this section. We're trying to get more money. So that'll at least get a sidewalk on one side. This section also is going to need sidewalk completion. And we know we're going to need to resurface Summit up north to Skyline. So what's the next big cost share project? What's the next big CDBG project? In my mind, it's either Summit or it's 8th Street. But um, those are the things we're trying to figure out right now so we can get everything in place. We're rapidly we're approaching our point to 8th Street. This may need it more than I think we can make that more than the housing, with the housing, with the safety. Right. Right. They're, they're right up there. And even if we do get came up to not dump the Southwest extension right out on the 8th Street, it's still going to have increase the traffic on 8th Street. Yeah. No matter what. It's, it's actually going to hurt the city because right now we can get state dollars to resurface this. And this, and that will fall off their maintenance, and then we'll have to figure out how to maintain two more sections of the street at our cost. Now we'll have less right. semi traffic, hopefully. But yeah, but there's trade offs to everything. They're going to fix that up nice before they dump that off. Oh, that's, so. that's, that's usually well, yeah, that, we're that's doing, always we're been doing that. Madison. Right. Now. That's always been what KDOT does. Is well, and we go to the in them. our cost share application hey, this was a state highway at Summit Street, and you dumped it on us, and, and we did not redo it. Yeah. And that always used to be their thing was. We're dumping a street, a, a highway back on you. We're going to get it pristine before we get it. They did. They, they did a good job. Summit. <laughs> well, they did not they, do that with something. They didn't do a good job of it. They actually did. They did from where they took us off the state highway system to north. They did actually conclude and resurface that. And then they gave us. Because they gave us a million dollars a mile. Turn back funds for Summit Street for maintenance going forward. Mm -hmm. We spent 60% of that for bump out curves, curves, and trees in the downtown area. And I still remember uh, one administration, yeah, or two administrations before, sitting in a room and saying, What happened to the rest of that money? And being told there was no rest of that money. There's like $2.2 million spent from Washington Avenue to Chestnut Hill for bump out curves, trees, and most of them cut down. down. <laughs> yeah, they're cutting them down. And, and, the, and the, the traffic lights that were changed in appearance. They put the nice little street signs up. <coughs> $2.2 million was left $1.8 million, should have left at least $1.8 million of funds for maintenance of Summit Street. And the answer was, there was no money. So what happened to it? And the response was, we'll look into it. And how do we do that? And what you do is, and you leave time. If you leave town. Yeah. Oh, anyway, so, but yeah, so we did get, they did do that resurfacing. Hmm. From down, whatever that is down there with the, with the Shepherd's Grace Corner, all the way to the north of, uh, to the to the north end. And well, well, part of that's still k Or it's, yeah, part of it is from yeah, the south to still k We just did that again. So here to there is considered. Yeah, that um, has, that's still north of Madison. Because okay. I thought when they brought that light down there, took us off. They also ended that with this uh, high in the sky plan to complete that uh, traffic way to carry you west of town across the river. They had three different alignments. They discarded two of them because they were well, now I guarantee they will not do one because they yeah. built a new bridge. Yeah. So it will come and dump out somewhere west of town right. whenever they do get around to building right. it. Yeah, yeah, there's. 
I spent a lot of time working on transportation, as you can tell, like more than you would think. Uh, I know we're running long. Do you guys want to talk about the Wilson Card Master Plan at all? Yes, let's talk about okay. it. I got 40 minutes. I'll give you the update and we'll go from there. <laughs> we need a break real quick. No, it's good to cover. Thanks, Carrie. Okay, hey, what? Well, I'll give you the PowerPoint spiel. What? Do what? Take space tomorrow on the other stuff on the smart TV. Okay, so if you're not up to speed on this, the idea was what do we do with the hospital lot that's vacant and how do we enhance the existing park? There was a lot of push for this in the mid part of the last decade. My former boss was pretty passionate about it. He got VJ Wilkins Foundation really passionate about it. They paid for this master plan study. Um, I don't think we're any of you on that committee. I don't think so. We had a planning commissioner, but it wasn't you. Uh, we had a bunch of board members and some other community stakeholders involved with that. And you know, over the course of two years or so, we kind of developed everything, got it put together. Then we hit a stall point. Then we kind of got it going when we renovated the train. Um, and it kind of stalled out again. Then it's just been kind of one after another. But I'm proud to say it is finally going forward this year. We will get some part of it done finally after five years of my working on it. Just goes to show how long planning takes to turn into reality. Um, a lot of history in that park goes back to 1912. Um, a lot of train heritage embraced in it, which is a key piece of this. This is the old depot they tore down. Um, that was an inspiration for some of the elements of this. And, you know, going into it, Wilson Park was already the most popular park in town. Obviously, the farm and art market moved there three, four years ago. Um, at that point, we were doing the films. We haven't done those in a couple of years now. But even before the pandemic, those were dropping off in popularity, so we kind of scaled back. But we can, we can do them again. Uh, the community band will be celebrating its 150th year this year. It is the longest continuously operating band in the state of Kansas. And that would be a cool tie-in with our 150th celebration. So, of course, Wilson Park, naturally, is where we're going to have a lot of that because that, that is literally the heart of our community. Uh, Takawala started in 2019. We're doing that again this year. Um, the summer solstice is what kind of used to be Prairie Fest. I don't know that there will be any one defined event, but I know that the Burford will continue to have probably at least one or two concerts every year there because they can do Bear Garden and make sales off that as well as off uh, a mission. So there will always be stuff going on in the park. Um, but, you know, as we were talking about, this is what the community needs. Obviously, we wanted to enhance the park. It's a big source of pride. If people know about the train park. It's kind of one of our signature features to people outside the community. And the goal that the committee was, can we make it our island park? Can we have that level of an amazing playground that people come to from miles around, that they rebuilt two times after it burned down because they had that much community pride in it, um, make it that, that kind of hub? How, what, what else can we add to enhance it and make it even more popular and useful than it is now? So two of the thoughts that came out of that were, one, we knew we need to look at some point, probably need to look at a new library facility. I'm, going to a host of reasons for that, but I'll probably have Mindy come to the June meeting to talk about those issues. And two, at the time, we felt like there was a need for an activity center in town. Now, rewind with me, this is before the pandemic. Um, at the time, there was a lot of battling for space for weddings, really nice event space. There was all the places around were booked. It was hard to get a space. So we thought, well, if the city can do something that can be multi-purpose. Um, that would be great. It would be a revenue generator for the city. The idea was that it could fund improvements to the rest of the park long term, at least the maintenance. Um, we were going to move visit our city there, start booking convention. We did not have a lot of good convention space. We still don't. We've got the ag building. We have space, but it's not the kind of space people are looking for for a lot of their events. I mean, it is a big palace. We've dressed it up quite a bit, um, but it was never the level of kind of over the top, I guess, that it was really envisioned by tennis fans. Yes. So that's kind of what led into this. Now, since this plan was put together, I will say things have changed dramatically. If nothing else, the pandemic changed the entire events and hospitality industry possibly for a long time to come. The other thing that's changed since then is we've had three or four new venues open up. We've got Chestnut Avenue venue. We've got the gathering place. The Burford is booking more stuff. I don't think the same conditions exist to drive this that we were thinking. 
So a good portion of this plan is going to need to be reimagined, I think, when we get closer to that phase. That's something I think you guys need to start thinking about in the comp plan, and we will probably reconvene a committee at some point to redesign some aspects of that. And there's a lot of possibilities for what we can do with that lot, and I don't think we want to just abandon the idea of kind of expanding the park space, but housing is a big one. That is a glorious open housing lot right in the center of town. That would be good. And housing was incorporated into this as kind of a compromise to understand that reality. Um, the rec center has got some needs. The library still got needs. We, we've got a great piece of land, but we only get one chance to build on it and do it right. So that was the thinking then. I think that's still the thinking now. So I just want you to be aware that that part is not fixed in concrete. Um, so we've done a lot of rotund improvements. Like I said, the Wilkins Foundation has been very instrumental. These are the folks that were involved in it. So Charlie Tweedy was the planning commission representative at the time. Broke it down into phases. We got a $500,000 challenge grant from BJ Wilkins. Unfortunately, we did not raise enough money in the time period allotted, even after a year long extension. And we only got you know, a little over 200,000. So what we've actually got to apply to phase one. So one big piece of all this, so I want you to understand the moving wheels here. In September, they're coming to town for their annual meeting. They're not doing it in Colorado. They're coming here and meeting at the Berkeley. We hope to have phase one completely done by then. We're actually going to invite them to come to the 150th and talk a lot. And I, I would assume at least the local members will be there to see it all in action finally. Um, but when that comes in September, Randy and I are going to go and make a hard sell and get them recommitted to this project because we know they've got a lot of people after them for money. But we also know the Burford's rolling off in a few years, and the agreement was always kind of when that big commitment came off, there's going to be a scramble to be the next big commitment, and we wanted to be positioned to do that. Now, the thinking and it was the event center. That was going to be the big, you know, V.J. Wilkins event center. I don't know if we're going to ask for that. But what I am going to ask for in September is the remaining $300,000 in this grant because we have matched it now. We've got a $300,000 um, land and water conservation grant that we're sitting on for the park and at least get that going so we can get the other two phases in the main park done. So that's this one here. That um, We did not get this grant and I doubt we ever will so I've shifted asking rec trails for central trail funding. That's who I'm waiting on. There are some other possibilities for parks, but nothing that's going to pay for the whole thing. We're going to be creative on it. There's a whole video. You can uh, you can look it up on our YouTube page. I can send out the link. This was the idea of the event center. Like I said, it evoked that look of the depot. I still love the architecture of that. And if we do the library, I, I hope we will maintain that. But this particular facility layout, with the event space, the meeting rooms, the offset space, catering kitchen, I don't, I don't think it's going to happen, just to be honest. I mean, there's just no way to build it because this is a multi-million dollar facility the way it was drawn up. And that was then. I hate to imagine what it looks like now if the structure price is building exactly. what they are. And I don't think we've got the, the willpower as a community to get done. But it would have been a pretty grand structure. If you've ever been up to Cowtown, they've got a facility kind of like this. It's more of a wood theme. This was going to be more marble and stone. These were – the rafters were like the steel girders, kind of like the farm door market. It was, it was a pretty cool vision. Indoor, outdoor fireplace, patio, lots of cool stuff. But like I said, probably a fire train. The library, on the other hand, is still something that we're seriously looking at. So the idea of the library attaching to it was the biggest need the library has right now is space. They can't fill, they have to cap their programs, especially in the summer, because they just got no room in that building. It's not designed for what they're doing. Modern libraries now are not collections of books. They're large gathering spaces. They have some books, but they've got multimedia, and they do a lot more activities than they did back when that was located there. So the idea was, well, they would be the permanent tenant. They would have access to the large space when they needed it. When they didn't, we'd rent it out. That may still be a viable model, but it's not going to be that kind of an event space for sure. Um, there's, there's so many different floor plan arrangements you can do with it, but that's kind of for them to figure out. That was still, in my mind, doable. Um, we've pushed this back to at least phase two. Like I said, we have three hundred thousand dollars to do it right now. We need about another two to three hundred thousand, and it will take care of the fountain and the restrooms. Um, the design could be adjusted. The scope of it could be adjusted. But this is honestly a pretty bare bones fountain. It's just jets that shoot water out. 
And this was the piece that was Wilkins' commitment was based on. So I feel strongly until I'm shot down for good that we need to push on it because it's both artistic and a play feature. Right. If you want a splash pad, it's got the spray guns and all the other stuff. We can look at that for Paris Park Pool, but I don't think they have to be mutually exclusive. Winfield's building too, one at the pool and one in the park. We had the idea first, so I don't want to give up on it, but I, I'm not going to lie, there's some political pushback on this phase of the project. So How much money are we talking about public money? Zero. Zero? Well, there's main that's, that's the biggest. Because that train was supposed to be zero public money. Yeah, well, there was there was an emergency draft. The commission approved kind of a blank check to get it remediated. There was just communication. I don't want to get into the train. <laughs> that was a pet project that got out of control. <laughs> I, I just I I'm hesitant. I'm probably going to poo poo it because I think Charles made some really good points. I've seen a lot of projects in this city, or I've talked to a lot of people, like and agree with what Charles was saying. These Projects, pet projects, just get out of control, um, and I don't think this is the right time for that. And that may be. Ultimately, I will tell you, this will not go forward if DJ Wilkins will not recommit. And this is their piece. If they want it, they've got to put funding in. Yeah, grant money from DJ Wilkins. Now is the time if they're going to be one. If they're going to pay for it. Yeah. So honestly, I, I'm not pushing it until I have that meeting with them in September. Depending on how that goes. Priorities we can do at that point that park with new playground equipment and like we were talking about it the last the foundation's not gonna pay for that. Yeah, they have no interest in the playground equipment. That has no, to be they're, well, they're, they're, they're adamantly opposed to playground equipment and new sports. I would do that before I would do this splash pad though. But they won't pay for any of that. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Well maybe because in their chart. We're still planning to do a playground, but what we're we are doing community fundraising for that, but we can't kick that off until we've actually got something moving again. We're almost at that point. I've got a meeting with Yasmin next week to get that rolling to get this Friends of Wilson Park fundraising effort back off the ground. But it's, it's going to take a couple of years of raising funds. So that was phase three. Um, the idea was this is a piece we can get done because we've got a grant that we're sitting on and we could have the commitment. Regardless of where you fall in a fountain, I mean, there's some people who love the idea. There's some people who are adamantly opposed to it. it, it it's designed. It's ready to go. It's shelf ready. And we have to have new restaurants. We know that. The, that facility is woefully inadequate for the park and its utilization. So if nothing else, the restrooms will get done. There's all kinds of ways you can incorporate public art as well, if that's something they want to see. These estimates are wildly off. Don't get yeah, that one, obviously, is never going to happen. Um, spitballs at best. So these, like I said, were much later down the line packages. Originally, this was phase one. We pushed it back because the market was more attainable. This is what we're in the process of. This has actually been ordered. Steel might be here already. We are literally at this point just waiting on Polygon to give us the plans for the footings so that they can be put into the rest of the plans and we can get going. Um, unfortunately, like all things post-COVID, there's been delays. And we can't control any of that. Playground is a huge piece of this. Um, it's just not one we flushed out a design on because until we have your funding, you don't want to get really in depth into that. So, real quick, I'll show you the existing current and then we'll call it a day. So, that's what we ordered. It's not quite as deluxe as was in the plans, but it's, it's still really nice. So I mean, it's still got that steel look that we're going for. This will be the Creekstone Pavilion at Wilson Park. It'll have a sign on both ends branding it as such. Creekstone has given $300,000 to this. Um, this will be the new permanent home of the Farm and Art Market. It'll be used for Takalala and quite a few other events, I imagine. Um, is that going to connect to the Rotunda or go, how close is it going to be? I just haven't seen that. Doesn't it go east and west? Yeah. yeah. No, it's north and south. Oh, north and north and south. south. This is north. Yeah. So there's a gap. There's a gap. Yeah. Okay. But not much of one. Okay. So this phase is what we're doing, and we're also going to be doing some of this. There was pretty intricate brickwork we're not doing, but we are going to pave and improve a vast amount of drainage improvement, which is a huge need. So the stormwater plan is also being worked on right now. We'll pave the lot. We'll install this. Um, there'll be some new lighting. We'll have ADA. Um, we're going to have Now, 
probably seem not ideological. I need them, but this will get the gist of it. So there's going to be four boxes installed that will have every kind of electrical outlet on demand that you need. So the food truck vendors will be able to plug directly in. We can unlock them. We're actually going to conduit an additional two. I think one in each corner. So we've got expansion. And I just asked for one over here. Um, so we're looking at that right now. There will be outlets all along the pavilion. They'll be wired and conduit as well. Um, I think we talked about having some faucets connected to it. I don't know if that's going to pan out. These are not, we're not going to do island lights anymore. We're going to have them out of the parking lot. <clears throat> and then for the rotund improvements, so we've just got a new dedicated fiber line that's coming in. Cox is putting that in in a couple weeks. They'll have much better high speed internet. And then we've got equipment we've been sitting on for nine months that we got out of CARES Act, sitting in Math Office, uh, that'll get us Wi Fi dramatically improved for what we have right now because right now what we have is completely bogged down of our cameras um, when we eventually get into doing the new concrete walk and those poles will have outlets along them and they'll also be wired so we can do the cameras directly wired in and help immensely with that that's kind of a long-term plan and like i said mainly the paving improvements are the big change so this is all going to become very ada friendly um, compared to what it is now. And it'll take care of so much drainage trouble because you guys have seen how it palms. We have to get that fixed. <clears throat> and then uh, there'll be a little upkeep back here, but it's not going to be completely cut off. The long-term plan was this is all going to be paved and marked. We're not doing that right now, but it's there in the future if needed. So that's phase one. That will get us going at least. It'll get the access to the events dramatically improved. It'll help the farm and art market. And kind of just sets the stage from there. But really, how far this plan goes is going to depend on community support, fundraising, and you know, those partners. Is but this all grant money, no public money? The goal of the Wilson Park Master Plan is as little as possible. Now, there's some city money tied up in our work. So we did the demolition. We're doing some of the wiring. Um, but that's honestly cheaper than hiring it out anyway. But yeah, the, the, the challenge that has been laid on me from the start of this is to find funding sources to propel forward. So, community fundraising for the playground. Um, I mean, realistically, that that farmers market is, is pitiful. I mean, there's a handful of handful of people that go to it. They sell like tomatoes and cucumbers and zucchini. But I found, as a newcomer to this city, I found it wasn't even worth going to. Um, there wasn't enough there to really draw me to to want to shop there. Well, I know they're in some flux, so they founded a new board to oversee both markets in our city and Winfield. Rice Cali has been reaching out to offer support. Um, this year, for the first time, they're going to offer what's called Double Up Food Bucks. So if you have SNAP EBT, you can actually get double your value on produce. It's a program that they've got access to. Uh, they're trying to do things to enhance it. I know that they've had some turnover. And I know and that might be the time that they're open. A lot of yeah. us have work at 5, 5.15, and they're already And I've communicated that to them. Like, I'm never able to go because we have city commission meetings. Those are right. not this meeting. Saturday morning is when Winfield does it, and they're very successful. Uh, out of the cold, well, it's true or not that the original board was we will run by with the folks and the right to make ours less successful. Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, I believe that. I, I believe that. So I was told that by two different people. Mm -hmm. So whatever this new board will help with that. Yeah. It, I mean, we call it the farm and our market. Like I said, it's a pavilion, but it's really designed to be multi purpose for multiple events. It's not just for them. It's just something that I think will enhance it. Plus, it just helps with, you know, you can park there and be out of the rain to go to stuff with a rotunda. I mean, this is all great, but. This just seems like Nick Hernandez's dream for Disneyland at Wilson Park. And he just, well, the attitude in the city is just throwing money everywhere. And I am not going to go for any public money being spent at Wilson Park at all. I'm, I mean, I'm fighting, it's trying to get those tennis courts to be funded by, you know, the Tennis Association. So I'm doing my part with that. But we got sacked with debt on that train, and I see debt coming with this grandiose plan. Unless 
we have guaranteed grants to cover everything. That's I, whole plan. I don't take anything to the commission I don't have a funding source for. That's why this is taking so long. Well, yeah, but... No, the, the, the city commission is not going to approve this without it. The city commission has been very clear that we need to find grants and the sources. And I, I mean, it seems like I talk a lot about trails and, and stuff because that's what the grants are there for. I'd love to talk about street projects, but we can't get the money. There's no grants for that. Hopefully that's changing, but, you know, the stuff we're doing is almost always key to where we can find funds for it to at least offset some of our costs. But this project is intended to be entirely... For your that. Now, maintenance. Yeah, so we got an issue, but we got more work to do. Okay. Well, uh, I've got to go, and we were adjourned, but Mr. Colston left us. So well, Paisley might still be on. Are you still here? Oh, she is. Oh, okay. So we have still leave. I was entertaining a motion to adjourn then. I forgot about Paisley on the do I, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Is she here? Paisley, you make the motion? Uh, yeah, I make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Do I have a second? A second. Thank you. All those who have heard say aye. Aye. Oh, same sign. Right here. Thank you, folks. Thank you.